Folks, spending your money the right way on these tools, that hard-earned cash that you've saved up, is no easy task to do. You can spend it on the wrong tools pretty easily, but making those smart decisions can be more challenging than you think. With that in mind, you've got to track it for a reason, right? You want to get your own projects done, you want to do it the right way, you want to pay attention to detail that you're not going to get from most contractors hiring it out. There's some good contractors out there, no doubt about it, but they are pricey, right? So if you can get the tools to get the job done yourself, oftentimes it can be done cheaper and done on your own schedule. But not only that, man, some of these tools you can get a payback on really quickly, and we'll go through a whole list of them. We're gonna focus on the aerators today, and um, I've got a quote actually that our, our old house that we had, just in the neighborhood, half acre of actual yard, to aerate that lawn in the fall, 348 bucks, 350 bucks to get that done one time for a half acre lawn. Out here we've got three acres. Can you times that by six? That's over two grand. I mean, that would mean that one time of using this aerator here would pay for the entire thing. So I think when folks look at these kinds of scenarios, when they're comparing hiring something out to getting it done, they're missing a big piece of that pie, which is the fact that once you buy a tool like an aerator, it's not just, the money's just not gone, right? It's, it is tied up, that money's tied up there, but if you use it for five years and you wanna sell it, you're, you can do that. You still have an asset, and no, it's not gonna be worth as much as it was when you bought it new, but it's still gonna be at least worth 50%, and in a lot of cases, 60 or 70%, maybe even 80% of what you paid for it new, because Inflation does its thing over time, as we are all well aware of, and so those prices keep climbing, and so those things that you bought five, 10 years ago, and the same holds true for tractors in general. They're gonna hold on to their value. They're not gonna drop like a rock, like a car or a boat or something else would do. It's just crazy how tractors hold their value, and so you have that, that tool there that you're gonna recoup most of the cost down the road. In a little bit, we're gonna compare the pros and cons of each style of core plug aerator, tell you about the benefits as well, but I wanna go through a list of other tractor tools that are gonna be really good values. And this means I had to make some hard decisions on some of my favorite tools that are not the best value on getting paid back the quickest, all right? They're more expensive. You know, the closer you are to zero, <laughs> typically the quicker the payback, not always, but uh, often is the case. So let's give you a quick rundown of those tools and see if they will be a solution for you. So first one up is a stump bucket, all right? And those have come in very handy for us and for a lot of folks as well. And if you do have really big stumps, you gotta grind those out. But if they are small enough to manage and and this can be eight, 10, maybe 12 inches. If they're older or dead trees, you could do some bigger stuff. And I've been sent some pictures from folks that have had two foot to three foot diameter trees, and those had to take a long time with a stump bucket to get out. But you can buy one of those for around a grand, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on if you want a big one, or a small one, whatever else. If you've got a lot of stumps to tackle, a lot of land to clear, one of those can pay for itself quickly, and again, Always keep in mind, you can sell that thing when you're done with it. Here's one of those hard decisions, and while I do prefer a land plane for driveway maintenance and grading, I went with the box blade because they are cheaper. You can do the same thing. It does take a higher level of skill to operate a box blade effectively. However, if you have a gravel driveway to maintain, instead of hiring that out, you can use the box blade to get it done yourself. That payback's gonna be a lot quicker just because it's cheaper than a land plane, so that's why it gets the win here. Another one that was a tough decision for me, choosing a brush hog over a flail mower. I really do love flail mowers. I like the versatility of it. I've, there's a lot of reasons I love flail mowers, and in general, I would pick one of those, but they are a lot more money than a brush hog, all right? So if you need to mow down your pastures, trails, Anything else that you'd use a brush hog for around ponds, that kind of thing too, well, you're gonna get your payback a lot quicker with a brush hog compared to a flail mower. And, you know, I used to do, I used to do a lot of services for other folks, do a lot of brush hogging and, and tilling and things like that. And uh, you can charge pretty good money on a brush hog. And so you can kind of keep that in mind as well, where you could do some, some side gigs and that's a whole other topic where, you know, folks have their own feelings about whether that's okay or not, and if you should be insured or not, and all sorts of other things. And we're not gonna get into that now, but if you're looking to get quicker paybacks even more, then taking on side gigs is certainly a way to do it, especially if you enjoy your tractor seat time. Speaking of doing those side gigs, tilling is another big one that I used to do a lot, and for me, that was one of the most satisfying things. And you can see a section here, well, actually we plowed that, this, that, tilled that, and historically, I will just use a tiller, but we kind of went a little crazy just to try some other tools out in different applications. But this is one of those tools that 
they just don't get used a lot. And I think it's a lot easier to justify if you can find additional creative uses for it. We've talked about other jobs that you can do with a tiller like um, driveway preparation. If you're gonna put in a gravel driveway, you gotta get that topsoil out and kind of chop things up and, and work it up and, and get it out of the way. And so a tiller is a great tool for that. A fantastic tool for yard renovation. You have a bumpy lawn at your house and you wanna start all over from scratch. It's hard to be a tiller to start your yard preparation. And again, a perfect tool for those side jobs. Another great tool for, it could be for your yard, it could be for food plots, it could be for crops, it could be for keeping your driveway clear in the winter. But a spreader is a fantastic tool and a great way to get a quick payback by doing it yourself. I had a quote this year, this spring, fertilizer, weed control, all that kind of stuff on my lawn, 900 bucks an application, all right? $900 an application, that's insane for that kind of thing where you can buy, <laughs> you can buy a spreader for, you know, well, if you want a good spreader, you know, 1,500, two grand, maybe 2,500 if you want, maybe three grand if you want a really big one. Point being, that kind of payback can happen quick, especially if you have multiple jobs to do with it or use it in multiple seasons. You know, there's uh, the, the electric spreaders that we sell from Ag Spray that will handle um, snow or ice melt pellets, I should say, in the winter, not salt, but then they'll handle, you know, spreading seed if you want to overseed in the fall. They'll handle all the fertilizer applications that you need as well on your lawn, on your plots, and your crops, that kind of thing too. So there's so many ways that you can save those labor costs just buying the materials and have a payback in just a couple of years. Now we did actually recently just get Befco spreaders as well. And so I had been looking for a long time for another spreader that wasn't electric, but a PTO driven one that was quick hitch compatible, which is really hard to find, um, but then would handle all sorts of materials. And so these Befco spreaders will handle sand, they'll handle salt, they'll handle all the other dry pelletized uh, stuff, you know, uh, fertilizers, herbicides, that kind of thing. Um, even seed and all that kind of thing for your lawn and your, your food plots and, and whatnot. And so we're gonna offer those. We'll show you a whole video here at some point with the different sizes. I got all the poly hopper versions of those in. I just think they do cost a little bit more than the steel hoppers, but um, they're corrosion resistant. They're really durable. They're just gonna, they're gonna weather a lot better over time. And so I think it's worth the investment to get the poly. So one that was easy for me to make a decision on was with snow removal equipment, the snow pusher one hands down and this scenario you know it's going to be the cheapest out of your snow pusher snow plow snow blower scenario all right they're the simplest to use okay there's no moving parts they work for all types of snowfalls okay so you're starting off closer to zero you can use it for whatever kinds of snows you have and so your payback's going to be a lot quicker that way and Man, snow removal costs are going up and up and up and trying to find contractors. And back when we were living in a neighborhood, they would try to bundle all the houses that they could together to get a better rate to keep those costs down. But they just keep skyrocketing, right? I mean, labor rates are going up, fuel costs is going up, equipment costs is going up. And it's just harder and harder to find contractors to do things. So prices are just going up because supply and demand, that's how it works. And while I haven't personally found any great uses for snow pushers outside of moving snow, you will see some folks that have talked about using them, especially with the rubber edge on the bottom. You know, if there's um, flooded areas on, on driveways, parking lots, they'll push the water right off of there. Uh, I've heard of a couple guys using them for dirt as well. I don't know how well that would work. So in my mind, I would go into it buying it only for snow removal. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, so core plug aeration, and that is not to be confused with spikes. All right, I do not like the spikes. The spike just pokes a hole into the ground and pushes all that dirt around it, compressing it all around there, all right? And that is not loosening up the soil. That is just worsening the condition, in my opinion. So a core plug aerator has hollow tines, all right? And they're gonna go down to the ground, and as it's spinning around and the tine hits the ground again, it's gonna force out that previous plug that's in there onto the ground. It looks kind of like you have a flock of geese that are all around your yard, but those will dissolve within just a couple of weeks. There's no reason to scoop those up. 
a lot of nutrients in there that'll just kind of naturally absorb back down into the ground. But compaction is just gonna happen. You know, it, it happens a little bit from foot traffic, but not a whole lot. It's mainly gonna happen from machines that are driving across your lawn, and then just kind of naturally over time as well. And it's gonna harden the lawn. It's gonna make it tougher for air, water, and other nutrients to get down into the roots and be absorbed. The water will just start to pool on the top and then run off to the low spot instead of going down into the ground taking all the good stuff with it down into the roots. And so by plugging your lawn on an annual basis, and you wanna do this for cool season grasses in the early spring and in the early fall, all right? In the summer, that's when your lawn can get stressed. Um, cool season grasses thrive in the spring and in the fall. And so you don't wanna do it at the end of the spring or at the end of the fall, you wanna do it in the beginning of those seasons if you can to get the maximum benefit. And also you typically wanna do this when the lawn is generally, the ground is generally softer, all right? And so you're gonna have more opportunities for rains at those times of year or saturate your lawn pretty good with your lawn sprinkler system. If you do have one of those, you don't wanna do it in the summer just because the ground is so hard and dry. You wanna do it when you have the best chance for those tines to go down into the ground and you can pull out a two, three, four inch plug, which is sufficient. That's what you're looking for. You need to add a lot of weight typically. And that's why on this guy here, you'll see a big old weight tray. You can add hundreds and hundreds of pounds. This guy here has a weight tray built in as well. We've got some suitcase weights in there just for example, but the weight is gonna be your friend to get that down pressure on there along with soft ground. You don't wanna do it after it's a torrential downpour. Um, that's not gonna be good because it's, you know, it's more likely to damage the turf with your tires and then tear your lawn up. So if it was just a, a torrential downpour that you had, give it a day or two to let it dry out a little bit before you go plug in your lawn. Okay, so we're looking at two different concepts here, all right? Now we've been working with Sweet Ball and with Dirt Dog for a few years now. Sweet Ball's a Canadian company, Dirt Dog's a US company, all right? So these are both North American high quality companies. Now this is gonna be a, a, a pull type or a, a tow along aerator while this is going to be a three-point mount. Now the primary function is going to be the exact same, right? They both have hollow tines on there to pull the cores up out of the ground. But beyond that, there's going to be some differences, all right? And so this unit here, sweep all, and I think rightly so, probably says that it's designed to be used at places like rental stores, all right? And so what they mean by that is this thing is built rugged. It's built tough because <laughs> when you have dozens or hundreds of different operators using a piece of equipment in all kinds of different conditions, uh, different experience levels, and different uh, potential for accidents to happen, you need something to be built rugged and tough, and this fits the bill just fine. On top of that, being a pull-type piece of equipment means you're not relegated to only using it on a tractor, all right? Now, we have this hooked up to a tractor with a drawbar and, uh, and a trailer mover here, but you can use this on a zero turn. You can use this on a garden tractor. You can use it on an ATV or a UTV. It just opens up the world to a lot of other kinds of um, equipment. Or if you have multiple tools, or maybe you've got a tractor, your brother's got an ATV, your mom's just got a little zero turn or something. You can shuffle it around to all those different places and still use one piece of equipment. And so if you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're wondering, well, I don't want the, the tines to be just dragging along the ground all the time. And so you have an electrical actuator on here controlling these tires to raise and lower off the ground. So for transport mode, well, you plug this thing into your battery, all right? And it's got a little control box on here. You, you hit a, a switch or a button and it's gonna lower the tires down. You reverse it to raise the tires back up and let the tines do their thing. And so if you're crossing a, a sidewalk or crossing a driveway or loading it onto your trailer or whatever else, you just put it in transport mode and you're good to go. And then when you get to the lawn and wanna do the work that it's designed to do, you just lower it down and get to work. Now this black uh, box up top here is gonna be optional, all right? That's not a standard uh, feature, but it's an optimal feature and something that I would probably recommend getting. Uh, you wanna put a lot of weight in there, all right? And you can put hundreds of pounds in here, you, whether you put a big old barrel full of water or if you fill it full of sand or you have a bunch of suitcase waste and you throw in there, just put weight in there. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as you can fit it in here and get it to stay put. And you gotta work within your limits, right? If you're doing it on a tractor, you don't really have to worry about maxing it out. But if you are on a zero turn or some other small two wheel drive uh, machine, perhaps there's gonna be a, a max tongue weight capacity or max tow capacity that you wanna be aware of. And so always reference your owner's manual. So a few of the highlights about this aerator here is gonna be made out of 10 gauge steel gonna have flat free tires on there, all right? So no flats to worry about, which is really great. Base weight's 223 pounds or 275 pounds if you do add on the weight box. And again, you can fill that full of a lot more weight. And then you're gonna have two independent hubs down there, all right? So if you're going on turns, the entire aerating axle with all those hollow tines on there is not gonna spin 
at one rate because those inside ones would really, or maybe the outside ones. Well, some of those ties would really tear things up if you're going on a turn. And so those hubs are independent on the left and the right so that they'll spin at a different rate and minimize the amount of tearing on your lawn. So you really only have one choice to make and that's if you want it or you don't want it on that weight box. Beyond that, it's one color, turf green. Your overall width is a hair over five foot wide while your actual aerating width is gonna be about three and a half. Now, Sweep All is a discount club partner of ours, all right? And they sell these aerators and they sell some insanely awesome sweepers that sweep all. <laughs> they sweep up everything. They're pretty amazing. And we'll show you, we've shown you in the past, but we'll show you another one here sometime soon too. But you can save 5% with code GWT. You're gonna order directly from Sweep All. If you can't find their website, just shoot us an email. We'll send the link to you so you know where to go. All right, so now for the Dirt Dog Plugger. So this is of course gonna be a three point mounted unit. Um, this is gonna be 62 and a quarter inches overall width compared to 63 overall width. Now the usable width or the aerating width on here is 56 and a quarter inches compared to 42 and a half, all right? So you are gonna be aerating a lot wider area, but the keen eye will note that you have the same amount of rows of tines on here, all right? You have 10 rows on here and 10 rows on here. So these tines are tighter together, closer together, and these are spread out a little bit more. Now you don't need anything else besides just hooking it up to your three-point hitch and raising it up and down. There's no electrical or hydraulic connections on this guy. Uh, it does weigh 199 pounds versus the 223 pounds over here, all right, or 275 with the added weight box. So this is gonna be heavier, all right. Now you still have the integrated weight tray and you can see we've got four 70-pound suitcase weights sitting in here. You could cram more in there, but they wouldn't fit flush, right? If you're gonna put them kind of stacked onto each other a little bit, I'd probably recommend putting a, a ratchet strap or something over top of it just to secure them in place. But you could definitely add more weight than just this 280 pounds if you wanted to. So we mentioned there's two independent hubs on the sweep ball aerator. Now this guy actually has five independent hubs. Look at that, all the way across. Okay, so a little bit different design there, but again, the reason you have independent hubs is so that if you're turning, they can spin at a different rate. The inside will want to turn a little bit slower. The outside, because it has to cover more ground, is going to spin faster. And so it's all independent there. So again, it's all about tearing up your turf as little as possible. So you will have two parking stands. So when you are not using it, you can put these in the down position there. Quick hitch compatible, cat one, three point compatible. Now these are available in a 48, a 60, and a 72 inch width. All right. So you have multiple choices there. Even on smaller tractors, you're not putting a lot of stress on the tractor itself. Um, it's not a super heavy attachment. It kind of rolls along as it's doing its thing. What I would be aware of though, is if you like to not have attachments stick way out side of your tractor. Um, me, I think that this is okay. A few inches outside either way or matching up basically with the width of your tractor is what I would prefer. One of those two options, having something way beyond is just for me, asking for things to go wrong. I'll whack a tree or a fence post or something stupid. And so I wanna have something more compact. So I pretty much know that if my tractor can make it through an area, so can whatever I'm pulling behind it. Now we stock these in gray. If you want a special order or something, you can get it in other colors, green, orange, red, blue, that kind of thing. Just let us know. We can submit an, uh, an order to the factory and we'll ship it out directly to you once it's ready. But if you want something quicker right away or a neutral color, then gray is what we'll have available. Now a question that I'm asked from time to time is, can we get the heavier duty series? There's I think two other series from Dirt Dog that are a heavier grade of plugger. And yeah, we can order those for you. There's a reason they're not on our website though, and they're just so expensive. I mean, honestly, it has not been worth the time to even create the listings to put the prices up there just so that you can go, oh no, never mind. It's they're really expensive. These are a great value. So are the, the sweep ball. I think that and I've talked about this before, but I, I, I work with a lot of manufacturers that sell a lot of products, and you don't see 90, 95% of those products on our website or on our, our YouTube channel. And that's because I don't think that they represent a great value. I cherry pick what I think represents a great value and then offer that for sale. That doesn't mean we can't typically special order it for you, but just bear in mind, there's a reason why we're not showing you. Alrighty folks, so there you have it, okay? Some tools to get a quick payback on, all right? And remember, once you're done with that tool, whether it's one year, five years, 10 years, you can sell that off and recover most of your costs, making it even cheaper. Now we are gonna be selling these weights as a bundle, all right? So suitcase weights are fantastic for not just purposes like this, but 
We sell a whole counterweight bundle too, but you can get a Versa bracket. This is a weight bar right here. You can put eight suitcase weights on there, either the, the 41 or the 70 pounders on there. So fantastic for counterweight. Well, you can see we have hitch hangers on here as well. So if you're looking to use your three point for something else, you still want to have extra ballast weight on the backside, you can put suitcase weights on there. If you can find a way to hang them on the front, put them up front if you need more weight up there. There's a lot of ways to use suitcase weights. They're easy to move around because they are just kind of the segmented weight instead of a whole huge ballast box full of six or 700 pounds. So check out those bundle prices on our website. So Sweetball, discount club partner, save 5% with code GWT. Dirt Dog, you buy them right through our website, goodworkstractors.com, along with all sorts of other stuff for your tractor. Pretty much anything you need on the three-point hitch or the front end loader, we can help you out. We ship all over the country every day of the week, goodworkstractors.com. And I do my absolute best to try to show all the tools that we sell on our channel, all right? That way you can have a better idea of how they work in the real world. You know, it's easy to talk about something up here and, and say it works perfectly, right? But things seldom go perfect, but I wanna show you the good and the bad. So if you like tractor stuff, check out those videos. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.